Welcome to Worship Online at BGC. We are so glad you are here and ready to worship. If this is your first time joining us for worship, we're so happy to have you with us. If this is your first time tuning in, let us know. Type first time below in the chat so we can show you some love. Life groups are going virtual. The groups launch August 24th and next week registration opens. So get ready. Last week was the youth conference and it was awesome. We had many meaningful conversations. The children learned more about wear, weight, wash on the pandemic precautions from Dr. Fletcher. I am a masterpiece because God doesn't make any junk was the topic from Minister Jacko Wise. The youth had sessions on social justice and mental health, facilitated by our outstanding youth leaders, Kyle Tatum, Josh Fletcher, McKenna Kearney, and Layla Thompson. They were awesome. The keynote speaker was Minister Adrian Bullock, who taught us from the book of Haggai and Psalms 73. We learned that when things don't go the way we plan, God is still working it out from the book of Haggai. And from Psalms 73, we learned when God seems unfair in difficult situations, that he is still good. We need to hold on to our faith and find a place of peace with God. It was a powerful conference of meeting conversations for our youth and children. Thank you for all who came out to support and attend the conference. It was a great success. It's time for worship. But before we go in, let us pray over the time together. If you have a prayer request, type it in the chat so we can be lifting you up as a community. Let's pray. Most heavenly and gracious Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be in worship with you and receive a word from your servant. Bless every family that has joined us today. Give us the opportunity to just worship and praise you. These and many other blessings are asked in your son's holy and righteous name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The praise team is ready to start and we are excited about how God is going to move. Enjoy the worship experience. God, I worship you, God. I worship you, God. I come into your presence, God, with the heart of thanksgiving, God. I come before your presence this morning, God, to offer praise and worship to you. Hallelujah. Right where you are, come on, just lift your hands. Come on, just worship the Lord. Come on. God, it's me and you, God. Here is my heart, God. Here is my worship unto you, O oh God. King of kings and Lord of lords, God, I give everything to you, God. I lay it down before you, O oh God. God, you're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor. God, I worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on, God wants to hear you. He wants to hear your worship. He wants to hear your praise. He wants to hear from you. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Oh, tell him how much you love. Lord, I love you. 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 Here am I, dear Lord. Here am I, dear Lord. Hey. Hey, no matter what it looks like, Lord, God, I know you have all the power. God, I know you have all the strength. God, I know that you're in control, oh God. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what the enemy is showing me, God, I know that you're in control. Hey, oh, hallelujah. Hey, it says, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. Down on my knees, Lord. This is how, this is how I fight my battles. Yeah. I love this next part. It says, oh, it may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by, Ooh. hey, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
yeah, yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how, this is how I fight my back. This is how, this is how I fight my back. This is how, this is how I fight my back. This is how, this is how I fight my back. This is how I find my bad. This is how, yeah. This is how, Lord. I come for you, oh Lord. Yeah, it may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded by I'm surrounded by your love, oh Lord. I'm surrounded by your power, oh Lord. You put a hedge of protection all around me. Yeah. Oh, it may look like, yeah. Come on, can we take it up? Here we go. This is how I find my back. Yeah, come on. This is warfare. Come on. Hey. This is how I find Lord, help me, please. Here I am, oh Lord. We fight not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness. So I'm going to put on the whole armor, the whole armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation. Yeah, I'm breaking every chain. Yeah. Here I am, oh God. Here I am, oh God. Here I am, oh God. You can use me. You can use me. You can use me. You can use me. I stretch my hands to thee, oh God. No other help I know. No other help. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Things going wrong left and right, but I'm surrounded by you. Not feeling well in my body, oh Lord, but I know that your healing is surrounding me. Sometimes I may feel all alone, but I know your spirit is comforting me, oh Lord. Use me, Lord, for your glory. Whatever you have for me in this season, oh God, speak to my heart, oh Lord. Speak to my mind, oh Lord. Speak to my spirit, oh Lord. It may look like, it may look like.
Let me look like yeah. Yeah. He may look like God, we worship you. God, we honor you. God, we worship you, oh God. In spirit and in truth, God. Before we move on to anything else, God, we give you our cares. We give you our worries, God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way. Use us, oh God. Mold us, oh God. Shape us, oh God. Even if you got to shake us, oh God. Have your way. 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 Even when we are surrounded, we fight our battles with worship. We fight our battles with praise. We know that the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. This is how we fight our battles. We don't fight our battles cursing people out. We don't fight our battles through carnal means because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How many of you know that when you fight your battles the right way, when you fight your battles in the Lord, you shall be victorious. We give God praise for this another day in the house of worship virtually. We thank God for the opportunity that we have to come together to praise and to magnify the name of God in this season. It is so important. It's important in every season, but definitely in this season, it is important that we are worshiping and praising and magnifying God, that we are staying strengthened and encouraged through fellowship online and through the word of God. And so I want to thank you for being with us in worship on today. Amen. Uh, there's one thing that I want to bring before your attention. One thing that I want to say, uh, we thank God for our Finding Common Ground series. Our Finding Common Ground series was dynamic. We want you, if you did not see the Finding Common Ground episodes, please go back. Watch Finding Common Ground. It will be encouraging and enlightening in your spirit and your life. We're grateful for all that God is doing here at Baptist Grove Church in this season. Uh, we continue to minister to our congregation and to our community. We continue to do the work of God. Why? Because the church is not the building. Uh, we are the church. The people of God filled with the spirit of God. And this is why, although we can't come to the building, the church continues marching forward. And we are grateful for that. We are able to do the ministry that we're doing in this season. We're able to do it effectively because of your faithful stewardship. We are grateful for how you continue to give, for how you continue uh, to support the work of ministry in this church. Now I have a question. What time is it? What time is it? And what do we do? We give God praise that we have it to give. That's not rhetoric. That's the realization of anyone who recognizes that everything that you have comes from God. And when you understand that your heart is filled with gratitude and thanksgiving because you recognize God doesn't have to give us anything. Thank God he blesses us with all that we have, not because we deserve it, but just because God is faithful. And so it is a privilege. It is an honor to be able to give back to God a portion of what he has given unto us. And especially in this season when we have our jobs when we still have income coming in we understand uh, that there are so many uh, who are not in that position so if you are in that position then you thank God for it and you support the work of ministry and for those who are in that position if you are furloughed if you are laid off in this season you do not have to go through this by yourself I have said and I will say it again we as a congregation are here for you don't want you to go hungry. Don't want you to be stressed. We will help you and support you in this time. All you have to do is email life at baptistgrovechurch.org. Life at baptistgrovechurch.org. 
Lord, and we will be here for you. Now, majority of people are giving online in this season. If you're giving online today for the first time, uh, here's a short video that you can watch that will direct you in how you are to give. Amen. If you do not desire to give online, that is fine. Uh, we are here at the church. You can mail your tithes and offerings in to 7109 Leesville Road, 7109 Leesville Road, and we will gladly receive your generous contribution. Now let us pray. God, thank you so much for the opportunity that is ours to give. You have been so faithful and we are grateful. Our gratitude now, Lord, is reflected in our generosity. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen. Come on, if you're believing God, if you're trusting God, if you are loving God this morning, if you are worshiping God this morning with us, I mean, you're not just spectating, you're not just watching, you're worshiping. I want you to type in the comment section, God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be praised. Our praise team is going to take us higher in the the Lord. Lord, you're holy. Come on, we serve a holy God. Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning. Yeah. 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 It says, I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Yeah. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are, and holy you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, call I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. You are so righteous to me. I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. Righteous you are, and righteous you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. You are so awesome to me. I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. Awesome you are. Awesome you be yeah, 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 yeah. I call you faithful. is all that you have been all that to me I call you all that your name is all that all that you are all that you are hey all that you are hey we'll keep it right there hey all that you are you are everything to me say all that you are Another best part said, faithful, faithful, faithful you are, faithful you. When I look back over my life and I see the ways you made. And the many, the many, many, many doors you've opened. You've been a faithful God. You've been a faithful God. Yeah. Holy you are. The 
seraphims cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Oh, the earth is filled with your glory. Holy you are Lord. Holy you are Lord. And not only that, when I call the name of Jesus, you are every knee to bow at the name of Jesus. And every tongue shall confess at the name of Jesus. You are, you are the King of Kings. And you are the Lord of Lords, the bright and morning star. Jesus, you are the rose of Sharon. Jesus, you are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha, I call the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 in the midnight hour. Jesus, 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 all day long. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, you are. And Jesus, and Jesus, you are. Come on, give it to him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, I love to call the name of Jesus. I love to call the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. God, I give you glory. I could have lost my mind. I could have lost my mind. But when I call on the name of Jesus, things begin to happen. Things begin to shift. Things begin to lift. I call the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. How many of you know that God is faithful? And because he is faithful in every season, we have assurance that all shall be well. There's a word from the Lord this morning, and I'm grateful for the privilege to be able to proclaim it. I believe that it is timely and relevant, and I pray it is encouraging to your life. Just before our time in the word, I would that we would pray over our time together. Father, thank you for your word. We pray that the seed of your word will be implanted in our hearts, that it may bear much fruit. I thank you, Father, for your people who are listening. I pray right now that you'll open up our ears, our hearts, and our minds to receive your truth. And help us not to just be hearers, but also obedient to what it is that you say. We know that your word is life. And so we pray for souls to be saved this morning. We pray that if anyone needs to make a decision to follow Jesus, that today they will make that decision. And we pray for believers to be encouraged. We pray for people to be reclaimed, be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen. I want to direct our attention to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, starting at the 21st verse, reading through the 24th verse, picking up at verse 35, and then reading through verse 42. Mark chapter 5, starting at the 21st verse. It reads, and when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. Verse 
35. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside. I'll say that again. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in to where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise and immediately the girl got up and began walking for she was 12 years of age and they were immediately overcome with amazement this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be unto god uh, verse 40 but he put them all outside took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went where the child was. From this passage of scripture this morning, I want to focus our attention on the sermonic subject, necessary evictions. Necessary evictions. He's a leader in the synagogue, and yet... Tragedy has struck his house. He's a leader in the synagogue. He's a pastor, if you will, and yet he is having domestic difficulty. You see, he's a leader in the synagogue, but his daughter has died. Which means then that his position was not a vaccination against problems. He has power, but yet he is facing a plight for which he does not have the strength to handle. He's a leader in the synagogue, but he's facing his own personal tragedies. Can I say this morning that the first thing we learn from J. Iris in Mark 5 is that difficulties do not discriminate. You see, in our culture, in our time, we may stratify, seclude, exclude, and create categories like the haves and the have-nots, but not so with trouble because rough times are not respecters of persons. The religious and the non-religious go through struggles. Both disciples and infidels go through through struggles, both the rich and the poor experience the trials and tribulations of life. Both the young and the old experience challenges because tragedies and challenges are common for all humanity. Doesn't matter what race you are, both black and white experience the pains and the griefs that are associated with the calamitous experiences of life. All I'm trying to say to us this morning is that none of us receive an exemption from excruciatingly painful problems in our world. Sickness, death, loss, physical and spiritual disillusionment. Right now, pandemics and disruption and social distance and chaos and tragedies happen to all of us. If I can say it like this, trouble is the great equalizer. My goodness, if, if, if this year has taught us anything, it has certainly taught us this. 2020 has created desperate times for all of us. 
I think this year all of us feel a little more vulnerable than we felt last year. All of our lives in some way have come to a screeching halt this year. All of us have felt some type of economic impact as a result of this virus, whether it's the impact on your income or the impact on your investments. All of us this year feel a certain level of uncertainty and angst. All of us have to live with the nightmarish reality of inept leadership and the consequences as a result. All of us have to wait it out for what seems like an endless cosmic storm of epic proportions. All of us have been impacted personally and communally, domestically and publicly, physically and spiritually, mentally and emotionally. To be human in 2020 is to feel some heaviness, some heartache, and potentially some headache. Just, just like J. Iris, I believe that the people who are listening to me this morning, you are facing your own problems for which you don't have the strength to solve. That's right. You've got to recognize that there are some problems that are too heavy for you to carry. It's too complex for you to figure out. It's too massive for you to move on your own. Many of us this morning, if we're honest, I know we love God, but we come weary. Perhaps we are forlorn. Perhaps we are somber. Perhaps we are teetering and tottering on the edge. You are at your wits end. Perhaps this morning you are completely frustrated and depressed. You feel confused in the calamity. Many of us this morning, as a result of the turmoil of this year, find ourselves completely desperate. But in these desperate times, J. Iris's life pushes him to seek help in Jesus. Here it is. He is a leader that recognizes that his authority is not enough. So instead of relying on his own power and his own authority, he is a leader that goes to the leader of leaders. He is a man that understands his strength is not enough. So he needs the strength of the God man, the God in flesh, Jesus the Christ. The Bible says that his tragedy pushes him down to his knees, but thank God that when he falls on his knees, he falls at the feet of Jesus and he is begging for his daughter to be healed. He is begging for his daughter's life. Can I tell you, desperate times will drive you to your knees. Sometimes the weight is so heavy. Sometimes the pressure is so great. Can I tell you that in trouble when you are driven to your knees, no matter who you are, the difference is where you turn. Here it is. I, I'll say that again. Uh, a moment's coming to you right now in the comment section because I want you to share this virtually with your friends and your family. Here it is. In trouble, no matter who you are, the difference is where you turn. The difference between breakthrough and breakdown is where you turn. The difference between falling apart and strength is where you turn. The difference between stressors being a stumbling block and stressors being a stepping stone is where you turn. Sometimes the difference between good health in trials and bad health in trials is where you turn. Sometimes the difference between peace and distress in the middle of your storm is where you turn. And all of us this morning need to be like Jairus and recognize that when we're in trouble, when life knocks us down, we need to go to the Lord.
Lord, if our trials will bring us to our knees, it needs to bring us to our knees before the feet of Jesus. It needs to bring us to our knees before the one who is able to lift us. It needs to bring us to our knees before the one who is able to heal and save and deliver. Here it is. We need to let the frustrating circumstances of our lives activate our faith. I'll say it like this. Let the hell you are going through bring you before the God of heaven, crying out for mercy, strength, and grace. Now, that's, that's the first thing. That, that, that this text certainly teaches us. But there is an emphasis in this sermon that I want to bring to four. And that is this, that Jairus has the right idea. He has the right belief. He goes to the right place. He brings his trouble to Jesus. He prays the right prayer. Lord, I need you to heal my daughter. But there is one major problem that jumps out at me in this story. And that is this. J. Iris has the wrong people around him. He's got the wrong people in his house. The wrong people. They are not encouragers. They are discouragers. The wrong people. They are not faith-filled, but rather pessimistic he's got the wrong people in his social network if you will you see Jairus goes to Jesus and Jesus says okay I'm coming back to your house but in the middle of the journey to his house there is a providential interruption by a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years. You, you know the story. She reaches out, touches the hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus says, I felt virtue flow from me. He heals this woman and lets her know that her faith has made her well. It seems like a delay and an interruption. And certainly when, when Jesus is speaking to this woman, there are people who travel from Jairus' house and they give him an updated news report if you will they they come in verse 35 and they say leave Jesus alone because your daughter is dead now it, it's no point in continuing to talk to him it's no point in continuing to seek help from him it's no point in continuing to try to activate your faith in this situation because all hope is gone and when Jesus overhears these people talking to J. Iris, Jesus says to him, basically, ignore them. J. Iris, do not fear, only believe. He, he's got the wrong people because when they come, when the situation goes from bad to worse, they tell him to leave Jesus alone. But not only that, when Jesus arrives at J. Iris' house, to raise his dead daughter, he, he finds people wailing. He finds people weeping. And the Bible says he saw a great commotion. Now that's the term that's used, commotion. You know what that word commotion literally means in this passage. It, it means he found people causing an uproar. He found people causing turmoil. He found people causing confusion. They were making noise that couldn't even be made intelligible. It didn't make sense. It was just noise. And when Jesus assesses the situation in light of his power, when Jesus says that, yes, she may be dead to you, but she's just sleeping to me, the Bible says that these people begin to laugh at him. Here it is. They are laughing in a ridiculing way. They are laughing in a scornful way. They are laughing in a mocking way. Basically, the people are looking and they are laughing, saying, look at this lunatic. 
Do you see it? My brothers and sisters, these are the people in J. Iris's house. They discourage him from continuing to trust Jesus when the situation goes from bad to worse. They are contributing to the chaos by making noise. They are causing a commotion. The people in J. Iris's house ridicule the possibility of the impossible happening because of the power of God. And as they look at J. Iris, as we look at the people around him, as we look at the calamity that he is facing, I believe there is a relevant word for all of us that are facing the calamitous year of 2020. I believe there's a relevant word for all of us as we face the challenges of our day. Here it is. As I read this narrative, God said to me, sometimes what is blocking the flow of God's miraculous power in your life is not you, but it's who or what you have around you. I don't want you to miss this child of God. Sometimes what is blocking the flow of God's miraculous power in your life is not you, but it's who or what you have around you. I want you to share that with someone. It's coming up right now as a moment because you need to understand that sometimes you are coming to the right place. Sometimes you are coming to Christ with your cares, but you've got the wrong community around you. You have the right faith. You have the right focus, but you've got the wrong people. Yeah, you've got the right faith. You've got the right focus, but you've got the wrong people. And if there ever was a time when you needed the right community, when you need to have the right people around you, it's when you're going through calamity. Yes. I mean, you've got enough angst. You've got enough worry already. The load you are carrying is already heavy. But sometimes instead of helping you, the people around you exacerbate the angst, the worry, and the load you are carrying. In fact, sometimes the stress you carry is not even your own stress. It's not even stress associated with what you're going through but rather it's the stress of the people that you're having conversation with in your conversation circle sometimes it's the people on your social network sometimes it's the family that doesn't share your level of faith sometimes my brothers and sisters it's not you but it's the people you have around you that bring about stressful times in your life here it is Nothing will test the relationships in your life like trouble. Here it is. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Here it is. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Which means that the litmus test for friendship is not simply where you stand when all is well. It's not simply how you support me when all is well. But it's where you stand when everything in my life is calamitous and trying and terrible. It's how you can support me and push me when things are not well in my life. Perhaps what you need to ask regarding your social network and the people you have around you is can they encourage you can they tell you to keep holding on when things are difficult can they tell you to not walk with your head down but lift your head up knowing that God is going to make a way somehow can they tell you that even though they walk through the fire and even though we walk through the flood keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand can they push you forward in your faith when you're frustrated because of what's happening here it is I'm convinced that sometimes in trying seasons we are wrecked one because we are talking 
and listening to the wrong people during our chaos. We are wrecked because we are talking and listening to the wrong people during our chaos. This comes across in J. Iris's story because the first group of people that you need to be mindful of in this season are the pessimistic pragmatists. First people you need to be mindful of in this season are the pessimistic pragmatists. The problem with the pessimistic pragmatists is that their pragmatism and pessimism is greater than their faith. And their pessimism infects their perspective of everything that is going on. Their pessimism affects how they speak and how they perceive. Here it is. The Bible says that a group of people come to J. Iris's from J. Iris's house, giving the updated news report about his daughter. Now, that's very pragmatic in a way, right? I mean, we want him to have the latest information of what is happening. We want him to be updated on the facts. That, that's, that's pragmatic. Perhaps if they had stopped right there, it would have been fine. But they don't stop right there because their pessimism bleeds into their speech. And so based upon the facts, they start giving pessimistic recommendations. Here it is. Your daughter is dead now. So my recommendation is that you stop bothering Jesus about this situation. Your daughter is dead now. So my recommendation is that you leave Jesus alone. Because if there was a possibility that he could do something about her illness, he certainly cannot do anything about her death. Are y'all with me in here? They are pessimistic pragmatists. You see, my brothers and sisters, there are people that are in your conversation circle that are pessimistic pragmatists. These are the people who watch CNN or perhaps even Fox, Lord have mercy, and they stay up to date on the latest information. They are very informed about what is happening in the world. But here it is. They don't view this information through the lens of their faith. They view this information through the lens of their pessimism. Here it is. It's not the facts that are the problems, but the conclusions that they derive from the facts that are problematic. Here it is regarding the fight for social justice. They say nothing is ever going to change. This fight is a waste of time. Regarding the pandemic, they say we all are going to die. It's just a matter of time. Regarding the troubles that you share, they say that's just the way it is. And I'm not sure about this whole faith thing. Regarding your prayer and your worship, they say I'm not certain that you can trust all of that. Regarding your pursuits and your dreams that you share, they start speaking to you about all the adversity and everything against you and tell you about all of the challenges that will stop you from doing Doing what it is that you say God has put it in your heart to do and they then will say I'm not trying to dampen your spirit I'm not trying to throw water on your fire but I just want you to be realistic these are pessimistic pragmatists here it is the problem is when we engage pessimistic pragmatists and give too much attention and focus to what they are saying, it can infect our spirit. I'm gonna say that again. Some of you, your spirit has been infected because you are engaging and entertaining pessimistic pragmatists and you're wondering why your faith has turned to fear. 
You, you, you're wondering what has happened to your hope. You're wondering why your feelings of hopefulness have turned to dejection. You were in a good spirit despite all that is happening. But when you talk to pessimistic pragmatists, they can bring clouds on a sunny day. My goodness, if they can bring clouds on a sunny day, then they bring a torrential downpour on dark days. You feel trouble now and you feel burdened and you don't understand why. It's because you are entertaining pessimists that are squelching all of the fire and extinguishing the flame that is ignited through the Holy Spirit. And even in the midst of your trial, you have hope. But when you talk to the pessimistic pragmatists, they try to squelch every ounce of hope that you have. Jesus, Jesus says to J. Iris, he gives him good advice. He, this, this is what he says. They come to him saying, don't, don't bother the teacher anymore. She's dead now. Jesus says to J. Iris, don't fear, <laughs> only believe. Listen, during chaotic times, you don't need people to dampen and discourage your faith. You, you don't need people to speak to you about all of the trouble, but never speak to you about what God is able to do. During your time of trouble, Jesus says, don't fear, only believe. You need people like Jesus in this passage who can speak into your life and say, yes, I know it looks bad, but we serve a God that can make a way out of no way. You need people in your life who remind you that God will be a bridge over troubled water. You need people in your life when the clouds hang low to remind you that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You need people in your life who remind you that you are more than a conqueror. Stop giving all of your attention to pessimistic pragmatists. So second, second type of people that, that we're entertaining too much in chaos and you'll be a wreck if you entertain these type of people too much during chaotic times, you know, you know, second type of people are sometimes we are entertaining drama filled distractions. Drama filled distraction. Here's what I want to say to you. Stop entertaining drama filled distractions. As a matter of fact, you need you need to go ahead and share that. Stop entertaining drama filled distractions go ahead and share it moments coming to you right now stop entertaining drama filled distractions it's right here in the passage when when they get to the house the bible says in verse 38 there is a commotion there are people screaming wailing and making noise in the face of tragedy you you do know I hope you know that not everyone crying and wailing at a funeral is crying over the deceased. <laughs> I, I, I got to say that again. You, you do recognize that, that not everybody wailing and crying at a funeral is crying over the deceased. Instead, they have their own issues that they are working out. They have their own guilt. They have their own regrets. They have their own shame and their own fears. They have their own drama that they're working out. <laughs> Here it is. During, during the time of J. Iris, you have people who were actually paid to mourn. That's right. They are professional mourners. They were paid to cry. Now, now, can I just say, you have to be a pretty unique person, a pretty touched person to want to get paid to mourn. I mean, I don't, I don't want to do a psychoanalysis on someone who wants to be a professional mourner, but to suffice it to say, these people were good at bringing drama. In fact, their profession required it. This means that J. Iris's house is full of drama-filled 
people when he was when he brought Jesus to the house to work a miracle. And here it is. Some of us have some drama filled friends, drama filled family members, drama filled co-workers. And these people are drama filled and they like mess. In fact, if nothing is going on, they'll start something. Why? Because they are uncomfortable with calm. When there is something going on, they will exacerbate the issue. They add chaos to what's already chaotic. They add trouble to what's already troubling. They add turmoil to what's already tumultuous. That's what the Bible says. Jesus came and saw a commotion. Listen, the girl's death is already a tragedy. We don't need a commotion on top of the tragedy. Listen, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We don't need added stress on top of it because of drama. We already have a lot going on with our money. We don't need people bringing mess on top of that. We already have anxiety. We don't need people adding more anxiety through their drama. It's enough going on, on already socially. We don't people we need people adding unnecessary grief and despair because they're seeking attention. We don't need leeches that are sucking the very life out of you, uh, but don't really have a true regard for you. They are actually working out their own issues. And all this does is bring confusion. Listen, listen, Jesus can't even make out what is being said. It's just noise. Here it is. Perhaps the reason you can't hear God is because there are too many drama filled distractions making noise. I, I think I'll say it again. Perhaps the reason you can't hear God is because you're entertaining too many drama filled distractions that are just making noise. You do understand that not everybody posting on social media is an expert and knows what they're talking about. It's just noise, drama filled distractions. You're confused because you're giving too much credence to what is being said by everybody. Drama filled distractions. Not every opinion is an opinion that you ought to give weight to in your life. It's just a drama filled distraction. Not everyone saying that they are trying to help you is really trying to help you. It's just a drama filled distraction. Not every extremist pundit is worth you entertaining. And even if they occupy the highest office in the land, their drama is not worth entertaining. It's just drama filled distraction. It, it, it's a distraction. Listen, Jesus is with him. But when all this noise is in your house, it takes your focus off of Jesus. I, I think I'll say that again. Jesus is with him. But when all this noise is in your house, when you walk in with Jesus, your focus is going to be on the drama filled distractors rather than the deliverer that is with you. The one who brings clarity is with you. But with all the co of the commotion in your house, you can't receive clarity. The one who brings peace is with you. But with all the commotion in your house, you can't have peace. The one who has all power in his hands is with you. But because of the commotion in your house, you can't have and access the power. Here it is, my brothers and sisters. Today is the day where you need to serve an eviction. I'm tired of people who just want to bring mess and distraction. I'm tired of people who just want to bring trouble on top of trouble. Listen, it's time for you to serve an eviction. Brings me to second point of this sermon. Here it is. We must serve eviction notices in this season. I'm going to say that again. I know, I know, I know. I know that we want just to be kind and compassionate to everybody and keep everybody in our circle. But no, in this season, 
It's time for you to recognize the importance of serving some eviction notices. It's right here in verse 40. Jesus says that the girl is sleeping and not dead. Verse 40 says, and they laughed at him. But here it is. But Jesus put them all outside. I'm going to repeat that again. But Jesus put them all outside. Jesus evicted them. Jesus served an eviction notice. The Bible says Jesus put them out. Can I tell you why this is important? Because so oftentimes we have an image of this kumbaya Jesus that just, you know, lets everybody do whatever they want to do. He doesn't cause any type of tension or stress or anything. He doesn't do anything that would offend anyone. That kumbaya Jesus image that we have is not a biblical image because right here, Jesus hears them laugh. He hears them mock and he says, y'all have to get up out of here. And the term that is you is ekbalo. Hear me now. Hear me now. Why is this important? Because this is the same term that is used for Jesus casting out demons in Mark. This word ekbalo is the same term that is used when Jesus kicks the people that have turned the temple into a den of robbers and commercial exchange. When he kicks them out the temple, Mark says he ekbalos them. Here it is. This is forceful. This isn't a puny kick it out. He kicks them out. Why? Because Jesus doesn't play around with distractions. He casts them out because here it is. Just as demons seek to control the environment of individuals to block God's authority and power in their lives. The people in Jairus, house were doing the same thing. He kicks them out because just as money changers in the temple are detracting from God's true purpose for the house. These people are doing the same same thing in Jairus's house. Here it is. Here it is. Don't miss this. Sometimes you are not possessed by demons, but you are entertaining demons or people that are serving a demonic agenda in your life. And it's time for you to stop minimizing the adverse effect that they have. It's time for you to evict. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I think I need to say it. It's time for you to evict. I'm going to say it again. It's time for you to evict. Just in case you think I'm not talking to you, it's time for you to evict. And just in case you think that this is too general, here it is. Ah, I, I know you may have an emotional attachment, but it's time for you to serve an eviction notice. I know you said you'd be a ride or die for years, but it's time for you to serve an eviction notice. I know you spent a whole lot of money on them, but it's time for you to serve an eviction notice. Listen, the times are too chaotic. The times are too tumultuous for you to be playing around with people who serve a demonic agenda in your life. Oh, the times are too difficult for you to be playing around with the wrong people. It's time for you to evict. I, I, I'm making real plain. Make it real plain. I'm making it real plain because I don't want you to miss this. It's time for you to evict. Stop calling them. It's time for you to evict. Stop texting them. It's time for you to evict. Stop answering their calls. It's time for you to evict. Stop messaging them. It's time for you to evict. Stop reading their posts. It's time for you to evict. Stop going over their house. It's time for you to evict. Stop letting them come over your house. It's time for you to evict. Stop tweeting them. Stop talking about them. Stop watching them on television. Stop allowing them to consume your thoughts during your prayer and devotional time. God has more than he wants to say to you and more that he wants to show you. Stop listening to their voicemails. Stop reading their books. Stop arguing with them. Stop scheming against them. It's time for you to evict. Why? Because if you don't, you are going to be 
a wreck in 2020. 2020 has enough turmoil of its own for you to have turmoil that the wrong people are bringing and that you keep entertaining. It's time for you to evict. Here's the good news. Here it is. That when you kick them out, that's when God's power can come in. <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this. I want you to get this. Their eviction is God's entrance. <laughs> His power can enter when you evict. Here it is. Here it is. Jesus can go into Jairus' daughter's room and fix the tragedy until they are kicked out. Jesus can go in and demonstrate his power until the power blockers are removed. Jesus says, I can't go into the very place where you've been praying for me to enter until you get some stuff out. I can't go to the very place where the devil and death have wreaked havoc in your life until you kick some people and some things out. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I can't go to the very center of your issue and demonstrate my power until you kick some people out. It's time for you to evict because in their eviction, God says my power is going to come in. Here's what he does. He kicks them out. He grabs J. Iris by the hand. He takes his wife. He takes those who were with him, Peter, James, and John, and he goes into the room. And this is the part that blesses me because some people are afraid to evict because you think that if you evict, you're not going to have enough people left around you. But in this passage, when Jesus kicks everybody out the house, he takes J. Iris, J. Iris' wife, Peter, James, and John into the room. And as I was reading this, God said, count the amount of people that are in the room. J. Iris, one. J. Iris' wife. Two, Peter, James, and John. Five, the little girl that is dead is in the room. Six, and seven, Jesus is in the room. Don't miss this. J. Iris, J. Iris' wife, Peter, James, and John, the little girl, and Jesus are in the room. There are seven people in the room. Can I tell you why this blesses me? Because seven is the number of completion. Here it is. God says to the one that is afraid to remove people because you think you're not going to have enough left. God says what you are doing is holding on to excess. You are holding on to fat. You are holding on to what is unnecessary. Here it is. When you decide to evict, God says, I'm going to leave enough people around. I'm going to leave all the people that are necessary for my power to to be demonstrated in your life. Is there anybody here that says, I know that even after I evict, I will have enough left with me because I recognize that God is with me. Here it is, my brothers and sisters. I'm glad about it because even though the mourners were kicked out, even though the wailers were kicked out, all of them were excess because the Bible says that when Jesus entered the room, when Jesus came into the room, the girl was dead. But thanks be unto God that the seventh one was in the room. 
the seventh one, the Lord God Almighty was in the room. The girl is dead, but the one who is the resurrection is in the room. The girl is dead, but the one that is the Alpha and Omega is in the room. The room looks hopeless, but the one who is hope is in in the room the room is silent but the silence is broken by the living word and when the living word speaks his word the bible says that the girl is resurrected is there anybody here that knows the power of his word the word speaks and says little girl little girl arise and immediately the girl got up and started walking i don't know who i'm talking to but is there anybody on this Sunday morning that knows that when the word of God speaks in your life when the living word speaks his word in your situation it does not matter what may be can I tell you when God speaks everything must fall in line is there anybody that knows that when God speaks his word has power and I don't know who needs to invite God in I don't know who needs God to speak but is there anybody that needs God to speak over your finances is there anybody that needs God to speak over your family is there anybody that needs God to speak over your health is there anybody that needs God to speak over your mind I hear the word saying little girl arise and when death heard it death came back to life is there anybody that says that is the kind of power I need. That is the kind of victory I need. That is the kind of breakthrough I need. Well, if that's the breakthrough you need, if that's the power you need, can I tell you it's time for you to serve an eviction notice. It's time for you to let some things go. It's time for you to let some people go. So power can come in. Power come in. Power have your way. Power make a way out of no way. Power is there anybody? that needs that power is there anybody that needs god to do it if you need god to do it will you lift up both your hands and say lord lord i need you lord i want you lord i know you can so i'm trusting you to make a way out of no way I'm trusting you to heal set free and deliver I'm trusting you to demonstrate your power if you believe will you lift up your hand will you lift up your voice and say yeah say yeah yeah yeah! Ain't he alright? Ain't he alright? Ain't he alright? Say yeah! Today, 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 today.
today, 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 not tomorrow, not tomorrow, not tomorrow, not next month, today, not next year, today, it's time for you to serve some eviction notices, hallelujah, I don't know who I'm talking to, they've been occupying space, they've been occupying your thoughts, they've been occupying space in your heart their pessimism has been infecting your spirit turning your faith to fear it's time for you to serve some eviction notices your life has been drama filled because of the drama that they bring and engender because they're not comfortable with the calm so they just bring mess it's time for you to serve some eviction notices. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Right now, you're on the verge of a breakdown and God wants to give you a breakthrough and you're on the verge of a breakdown because you got the wrong people around you. And the Lord says, I have the power to bring breakthrough in your life. But in order to let my power in, you're going to have to kick some people and some things out. And I know, I know it may be tough. I know it may be difficult. I know you may be nervous because you may be thinking that you're not going to have anybody left. You're not going to have them if you let them go. You're not going to have anybody around. If you let them go, you're going to be all by yourself, but not so. Because there were seven people in the room. Seven is the number of completion. God says that I am going to leave or bring everyone and everything that is necessary for my power to be demonstrated in your life. Hallelujah, I wanna pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's a lot happening right now but God, we turn to you. We know you have all power to, to bring about the breakthrough that we so desperately need. God, we trust you with our very souls, with our very lives. But Lord, we admit that sometimes the angst and the frustration and the worry and the fear and the weight that we carry is not our own or because of what we're going through, but it's because we've got the wrong people around. And so right now, right now, right now, right now, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will be decisive in our actions today, God. I pray that we'll make a decision today to make the evictions that we need to make for the sake of our peace, hallelujah. To make the evictions that we need to make that your power can be demonstrated. To make the evictions that we need to make for the sake of our maturation and our growth in you. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will not play around with people who serve a demonic agenda in our lives they're distracting us from your power they're distracting us I pray in the name of Jesus Lord that even if the distractions are on television or social media that Lord we will be very judicious about what we give our attention to because our focus is on you. And thank you, God, that you have the power in your very word to change our situation, to change our brokenness, to, to heal our sickness, to resurrect the death in this world and in this life. And so, God, we trust you. 
and we will do everything necessary to see the manifestation of that kind of power in our lives. We love you, we glorify you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen again. The Bible says that Jesus Christ died and rose again so that we could have relationship with God. If you desire salvation, text BGC Save to 555-888. Or maybe you're saved already, but you need a church home. We'd love for you to become a member of the BGC family. Text BGC Join to 555-888. Thank you for joining us in worship. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to worship together. Pray that this worship experience has been transformational, life-changing for someone who's watching. And now, God, as we go out into another week, pray that you will be with us, that you would give us strength and grace to continue to live out our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, come on. This is warfare. Come on. Hey.